All right, so to make this clock, I've got this seven segment display module. And it appears that if I just connect this here, you can see it's basically just a bunch of LEDs and each LED is connected between a different pair of pins. So if we can control the voltage at each pin, just set one of them to five volts and one of them to zero and uh, we should be able to control all the LEDs. So I'm gonna try and get this thing in here, the shift register, and I've got the AT Tiny right here, and maybe we can get something working. Okay, got it hooked up, and I programmed the AT Tiny to just flash all of the lights on and off. So if we start it up, yeah, there you go, it's working. So uh, now I just need to add functionality for the other three lights. Uh oh. That's not quite right. All right, that's working a lot better. All right, so I've got three digits working and uh, run into a little bit of a problem. I don't have any extra pins to control the fourth digit, so I can either add a second shift register or I'm just gonna have to come up with something clever. We'll see. All right, well, I went with the second shift register and that works pretty well. So I've got the first shift register controlling all of the anodes and the second one controlling all the cathodes. All right, I've got the button working here. So you see when I hold it, it fast forwards and then it starts going normal again. Okay, got the second button in. So this one sweeps through the minutes and this one sweeps through the hours. So you can pretty quickly set whatever time you want. All right, so now that the prototype is done, I wanna go over the code real quick here. So you see this SPI write function, which is this big long thing. This is basically just loading certain bits of data into the shift registers, which I'm using as extra uh, output pins for the microcontroller. So if I just had a microcontroller with more pins, I wouldn't even need this function here. Um, so whenever you see that, just just think I'm I'm controlling stuff. Now this numbers array here stores the shapes of all the numbers. So each number is going to have certain segments on and off, and that's stored in the bits of these hexadecimal numbers. And I have these four variables here that store the value of each digit on the display. Right. So the the you know the four digits have these four values. So what I do here to display the four digits at the same time is I'm actually cycling through each digit one by one. And uh, this is because there's only 12 pins on the seven segment display module. So it's not actually capable of controlling all 32 LEDs at the same time. And you have to use this multiplexing scheme. And so I flash the first digit and then I clear it and then I flash the next digit and I clear it and I just go through that over and over. And this little portion here is just adding the decimal point. And uh, down here I have functions to handle like the carrying. So the minutes count up to 60 and the hours count up to 24. And this timer function here, uh, if we scroll down all the way here, this sets up the timer so that every 125th of a second it will call this function. And I'm, I've set this up so that after, I have these counters here, so that after enough calls of this function, it will increment the minute by one. But also it's constantly checking several times a second whether either of the buttons are being pressed. And that allows me to edit the time. So that's pretty much it for the code. Of course, you can totally code this circuit to do anything, right? Because it's basically just a microcontroller hooked up to a display. So I could have the buttons uh, start and stop a timer, right? And it could be a stopwatch. You can really go anywhere with it. All right, so since I've got it working, I decided I'm gonna put it on one of these. So that's sort of the layout that I'm going for. And then I just gotta make sure to uh, write it all up on the back. So uh, let's do a time lapse. So one funny thing I want to note while I'm building the circuit here is that I wanted to make sure to 
check the functionality of the circuit even when it you know was only partially done so i actually built uh, a crude multimeter on the corner of the breadboard there it's literally just an led with a resistor but it allows me to check whether a certain signal is five volts or zero volts or if it's like a clock signal it should be a brightness somewhere in between and so that really helped me make sure that this was working all the way through and it actually helped me catch uh, a short circuit at one point so that was uh, very helpful of course it'd be more helpful if i had a real oscilloscope all right and here it is the finished product so that took me i think about three hours of soldering and you, <laughs> a big jungle of cables here but uh yeah got it working and you can see the buttons work that takes up minutes that takes up the hours so I can set it, you know, whichever time I want. So this project was really fun. In the future, I would probably opt to use a professionally made PCB because the soldering was a bit of a nightmare. But at least I can say I'm an expert solderer now. If you have one of these displays, go ahead and give it a try. Maybe even put a buzzer on it and turn it into an alarm clock. Whatever you do, have fun, guys.